Hi everyone, it's Danny and Paula. Hello, we're back. I know we've been gone for a little <laughs> while. Uh, we'll get into that maybe. And I'm back by popular demand. Right, Paula? Back by pop demand. That's right. It's like, when are you guys going to do another show? Like, oh my God. Well, it's been it's been crazy lately. <laughs> it has been crazy lately, especially for you. Yes. Right? Well, I there's a, have, there's a lot of things that have changed recently. So things have. Yeah, my life has definitely changed. Uh, I wouldn't say it's less crazy, but it's a different focus. Uh, school is starting, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and for you as well. So for me as well, right? So I'm an IT director at a school over in St. Paul, and you are... And uh, I am a junior at university. In Morris, right? At U of M, yes. Yeah, right? So we're not even close to our studio anymore. That's mm -hmm. a problem as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's a big change. The uh, the campaign is, uh, of course, over. Yes. Um, my campaign for 2020, the primary was over. Um, so now I can shift my focus to opening school, which mm -hmm. is, of course, a very controversial and topic how do you, as well. And how do you feel about about the election results? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased, very pleased. Uh, I, I haven't actually haven't even looked at the final results, the uh, initial re because there was so much mail in balloting, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've moved on to another campaign that I'm working on. I took over as campaign manager, so always moving forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, the initial results was about five, a little over five percent. Uh, there were four candidates on the ballot, so mm -hmm. we were second. Uh, more than double the next uh, next person on the ballot, so mm -hmm. so that's very positive uh, momentum. Yeah, uh, you probably already know. Uh, some of our audience probably already knows too that it was a very difficult year for campaigning. Yes. In fact, we almost withdrew from the campaign. It probably would have been. The, it's like the most difficult year. The most difficult yes. year. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I'm not your typical politician. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my fourth campaign. Mm -hmm. With my fourth campaign, actually, I first ran for House back in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the corporate takeover of America. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, what, six years later, everybody's talking about it. Right. So it's uh, it's been a long journey, uh, a lot of uh, learning about how our political process works, uh, mm -hmm. how to challenge that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're... We're excited. We're looking forward to the next campaign. You know what I liked about your campaign is that you don't lead with trans. You I know, don't. Yeah. And we've even seen, we do read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> and there was somebody that did make that comment. There was like you. They didn't even know that you were trans. Yeah. Until they watched one of our videos, and they're like, and they, "Oh my god!" Like her voice is is so deep so and deep. like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I always get misidentified on the phone, right? But that's but that's what we want, like in a political candidate. You shouldn't have to yeah. lead with, you know, because I mean, you know, yes, being trans is is important to us, but at the same time, like it's not the most important thing, you know. Yeah, and that's like yeah. that's engaging in identity right. politics. So I mean, it goes to the broader issue of civil rights, mm -hmm. right? I mean, um, everybody should have the same civil rights mm -hmm. and of course we know that that's not true um, <clears throat> I I didn't I mean in my first campaign I was the first woman trans openly trans woman to run for the US House of Representatives back mm -hmm. in 2014 and that was the issue right yes <laughs> yes um, and you know even as a, just any woman running for office, uh, it's difficult to get people to focus on what your policies mm -hmm. are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's still a tremendous amount of focus on, uh, you know, uh, how you look, uh, do you have kids? Uh, how, <laughs> are you, like, how are rich you, are you? Uh, how well, rich are you? Are you really smart enough to run for office? Yeah. Uh, that, I think that's the most important thing. You have to be intelligent to run for office. You have to be yeah. intelligent to engage in politics. You have to be intelligent to be president. <laughs> I, I think, well, you know, that's been clearly proven wrong, right? But it's like, <laughs> but it, like, I don't know. Depending I mean, how you look at it. I mean, it's, but the way that politics, politics like operate now, it's like, it's a popularity contest. 
It's like, it, it's a it, shock it factor. It's is. about buying your way into these like positions. I, I, I totally agree with that. Where um, I want it to be shifting back into like, I want people with high IQs, with like, with degrees, with people who have like a journey that, you know, they actually can bring something new to the table. True. And no more dynasties. You know, I'm done with dynasties. Somebody that's really interested in leadership and mm -hmm. uh, the future of our country and simple things like civil rights. Mm -hmm. um, we don't. We don't have much of that. Yes. Uh, and I've said it many, many times that our campaigns are about policy. Nobody really votes on policy anymore. Mm -hmm. It's really all about marketing. Yeah. Um, would and, you say you, know, that, you look at the person we have in office right now, our president? Would you say that you're good at marketing yourself, Paula? Uh, I'm not particularly good at that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that's of course the issue, right? Yeah. The uh, I am a policy person. Um, I've spent a lot of time studying policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a uh, chapter in a book about LGBTQ policy. Um, and so I've attended a lot of policy conferences, and pol politics is about sales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, one of the best salesmen in the world is now uh, president of this country. Yeah. So. Which um, you know um, that whole business mentality that Donald Trump has, it just goes to show you don't have to be the smartest, but you have to be the most cutthroat, and he's very cutthroat. He, he and determined. He is. I he, I don't see him as a person that has much empathy for anyone. Oh, absolutely. Right? But you don't need empathy, uh, like you know, to be successful. But I I think that's part of being a good uh, salesperson. Mm -hmm. right? uh, you know, ideally, a good salesperson would be about the quality of the product that he's selling and. Not really true. Right. I had a. I, I was a. a ma I was in uh, management training for a while with a guy in Chicago, and he talked about sales. And he said, "You know, if you want to sell anything in this country, you have to talk about God. You have to talk about God, country, and you have to talk about motherhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All and, things that I can't relate to." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, at that time, maybe not quite much so true anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, early '80s, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, very true at that time. But but you get the point. Yeah, I you see. Know, the, part of the reason different. why I don't like going shopping, like I don't like going to malls, is I don't like salespeople. Salespeople. I don't like yeah. that mentality of like of like this kind of like fake way of like talking with you. Where it's like, if you're like, say, like in the dressing room and they come and check on you and they're like, oh, that looks so cute on you. That looks amazing. And then your best friend sitting next to you and just like, that looks like garbage. Like, don't, <laughs> don't you dare buy that. that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they're just saying that to you because they want you to buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I just don't like that, that, it's so that ingenuineness. Yeah. Which is totally what politics is completely about, right? Mm -hmm. It's totally artificial. And uh, I, I, it amazes me that more people aren't in tune to that. You're probably one of the most like authentic mm. candidates. Well, thank out you. There. I appreciate and that. And also, our viewers should know that too because Paula is an intellectual. She's an intellectual. She's very open and honest about you know what what her beliefs are and you know everything she says. Like, and this is coming from somebody who's known her for many years. She actually means everything she says. I do. Yeah. Uh, You're not trying and, to trick anybody. And what you said about <laughs> going to the mall, uh, it, it's one of the things I find refreshing about you as well. There's many things I like about, you know, the things you're involved in, but I feel the same way about technology, right? Mm -hmm. uh, working on, especially being engaged in social media, right? It's constant advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like the old days when you could watch a TV show and every 10 minutes there'd be a commercial break and mm -hmm. you could get up and fix snacks or go to the restroom or whatever. Now it's constant. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a constant sales pitch online. You're always plugged in. You're always plugged in, yep. And uh, it's overwhelming. And I think a, a lot of people are feeling that. It's one of the things I've, you said. <laughs> Uh, with when you're talking about one of your classes, right? I thought it was really refreshing that you didn't know 
that an embedded link was called a hyperlink. I didn't know what a hyperlink was. <laughs> it's like, oh, I love this person. She's not a techno freak. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like kind of like how like you're you're an intellectual on many things. Like I'm an intellectual when it comes to like emotional intelligence. Like I have a high like EQ. Very, very much so. I've noticed that. And I'm like, I'm a people person. Mm-hmm. I can like, I can engage with people really well. Yep. Um, and I'm just not the most like technical person. Like Paula does a lot of the, like the tech for these videos. I just do the artwork for the thumbnails and that's oh, about I just it. That's the like artwork. the extent. That's no the reason... best part. That's the sales. Yeah. And the only reason why I'm good at that is because there's a creative element to it. There's like, there's very little like, you know, like I'm not coding. I'm not doing any of that. Like. So. Right. Yep. But I'm getting better though right. because all of my classes are online. So I feel like I'm getting more in. I've never well, stared at a computer screen as long as I did like this semester. Like. And you, you know that concerns me a little bit, right? I mean, that's <laughs> that's the nature of the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. I see it in my school too. We went through a lot of this distance learning, so all the classes mm-hmm. are online. They're all using Zoom. Um, but it's kind of the old hammer analogy, right? Mm-hmm. If all you got, the only two you have is a hammer, then mm-hmm. everything looks like a nail. Yeah. And so we'll see where it goes. Uh, I'm concerned about it. The teachers don't really like it. Either, no, they don't. Um, yeah, there's one yeah. of my instructors who just, she just hates it. She refuses to do Zoom. She'll just pre-record videos and be like, okay, watch the lecture video. Yeah. But it's hard to like do that, do it that way because you don't feel like you're getting engagement. And if you want to ask questions, it has to be through an email. And usually you have to like really, really type up like all your questions in one. Yeah. And in the turnaround time is like, like a day or two, depending on how big your class is. And it's hard for everybody in the Zoom conference, too, mm-hmm. to know what anybody else is doing, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't necessarily or rarely see who's asking the question. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's... I don't like it. Well, I it's for that reason that it, I think... It's useful for a specific meeting. Go mm-hmm. ahead. I think that universities and colleges should um, have tuition. Or do some sort of reduced tuition for online learning because we're really not getting our money's worth. And let's be honest, like these yeah. these Zoom meetings, they don't mm-hmm. always work according to plan. Yeah. Sometimes they're just they're just canceled because it's like a system overload. And you're like, just, oh, okay, I know, guess I there's have... no class today. And she's just like, okay, just read these chapters. And I'm like, okay, well, we're paying like thousands of dollars for like for these classes. And like, it's... and all of a sudden, classes are just canceled. You know what I mean? For it's, people who are painting out of pocket, like it, that matters. It's interesting to hear you say that. I think that's a really important issue mm-hmm. um, because I, I agree. I, you know, it isn't the same quality, mm-hmm. um, and so I don't know. Um, it's harder. Like online classes are harder, too. Like they require more effort, like in a way. But it's like not the kind of effort that like. I don't know that you don't that you wouldn't do in like face to face because you it's all about discussion boards responding to comments whereas you know you could like knock that out in just like you know a face to face class and yeah. just like discuss it as a class. Yeah, I and so I you know I think it's useful in terms of a specific meeting with a mm-hmm. specific task and a specific mm-hmm. outcome, maybe a small group. Yeah, but to have even twenty five or thirty people online, much less fifty or a hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't work and it it again goes to some of my objections about technology this is where the tech companies want to go right Mm -hmm. Um, they'd be very happy if everybody would just stay at home yeah and work online but you know I get that you know they're they're doing it because they're trying to avoid um, any sort of like legal issues on their part because universities run like banks too Um, and the, the universities like have to take as many precautions as possible because I mean, I don't know if you heard, but U of M just, um, had a kind of a, an outbreak in the twin cities campus with their athletics, apparently like a sports team all got infected. I think something like 40 something students and a lot of the classes had to be canceled that they were a part of, which I didn't get because I thought all athletics were just like not, they were just postponed until further notice. Like, I don't know. Yeah, they had a, there was an incident down at uh, um, St. Olaf College too. Mm-hmm. Right? A couple, I think, a couple of students got suspended. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, they were 
disallowing any uh, parties. Mm -hmm. right? So they were claiming that the that the students had gotten together for a party uh, and COVID cases had evolved from it. And uh, I, I have some real concerns about where all that's going to. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of again. A, personal liberties, uh, relationships, mm -hmm. uh, civil rights. Uh, we're starting to do, uh, at our school now, we have to do health checks every day, right? Mm -hmm. We have to fill out a health uh, uh, screening. And, okay, so that's just for COVID, right? But mm -hmm. where does that end? And what's the natural, the next progression right. of that, right? Right. Uh, well, we, think, don't, we don't know. We don't know, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and we're not thinking about it either. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about drug testing, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I spent a couple of years, when I was writing my book, uh, I spent a couple of years working in uh, minimum wage work, some mm -hmm. of the essential worker jobs, mm -hmm. uh, retail, uh, phone center. And I, I can't count the number of drug tests I had to take during that two year oh, wow. period. Which are completely worthless, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but are we gonna are we gonna start having the same policies for uh, general health screenings? Yeah. Right. Good is question. there an in a potential industry there like drug testing? I mean, there's a huge amount of money that goes into that. It's mm -hmm. a big, major industry, mm -hmm. and they could easily make a major industry out of health screenings. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And in, in fact, some companies already are moving in that direction. So. Right. By the way, to everybody watching, this video has no topic. No topic. <laughs> we're right. like literally, we're this gonna... is very impromptu, so we're um, just kind of talking about whatever. Um, we covered a lot of topics like in an, our most recent videos, so um, I figured we'd just keep it casual this time. So there's a, a, a new, yeah, we're, we're just going to talk for an hour and then we'll sit, give it to the uh, tech people to edit it and try to come up with something <laughs> meaningful. The tech people? The tech people, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, actually, this is, like, a good, um, this is a moment where we can actually talk to, like, the people watching and say, please ask questions. Like, we do, we do like questions. I, I would love to do a video where we actually get to converse a little bit more with, like, with our subscribers, so. Yeah. We have to, I mean, it's, again, it's it's more fun if it's interactive, right? Yeah. Um, maybe at some point we should do a live stream on Twitch or something. That would be fun, have, yeah. Uh, we could also have... I uh, mean, we love we love the positive comments. I mean, even to some extent, we like the negative comments. We, we like, joke about them. <laughs> <laughs> you dudes look ridiculous. <laughs> These dudes look ridiculous, yes. I don't know why anybody tunes into a trans channel to talk about dudes. Oh but. my god. Well, it's just like, it's like, that's actually like pretty, like, that's pretty like PG. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've heard worse. Like, it's like you're, you're talking to two trans women. I was like, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. <laughs> and, you know, I know a lot of trans people are, are pretty sensitive to that. Oh I, my I god. Guess. I guess I can remember a time when I was kind of sensitive to that too. I think older trans but, people are like not so sensitive. Yeah. Like I think well, cause right right now, like I was actually just having this this um, this discussion with one of the younger um, students in one of my classes because you know like the whole Gen Z is like obsessed with the '90s thing right now. And really? And they I didn't say, know that. Yeah, and they say things like, "Oh my gosh, I wish it was the '90s." Like they, they and these are. They didn't live through the 90s, but they're wishing it was the but 90s they, based on media. Because they heard things about the 90s. Yes. yes. So, so like, I'm just like, I don't wish it was the 90s because I was there in the 90s and it was like, it was dark. It was mean. People were cutthroat. Like, I couldn't walk out the door without being called like, you know, the F word and not like the four letter one, the longer one yeah. rhymes with maggot. Um, and you know, and then go to hell and you know, um, I mean, this is at a time when they didn't even know what trans was. There was no, there was no gay marriage. I, yes. There I was, was no, I was there. I yes, lived through the nineties as well. But like, but it's just like, it's so different now. It's like, I should have been, I should have been like, I should have been like, you know, coming out at this time. Cause really this is like the best time to come out as trans. Maybe I don't know. We you don't should think so, we should talk about our trans experience. Oh right? yes.
Are you good with that? Yeah, I'm good. Oh yeah. It yeah. like it's a total game changer. Good like idea. actually that seeing actually seeing ourselves in like in the <laughs> in like a video prompter. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so we're gonna have much better videos now, right? Because we have a video prompter. Yeah, we are. So we can. I still have to make sure to look up there over. instead of looking over here. Look, yeah, it's our okay. audience is over there, right? Yeah. And we're over there. <laughs> And now I can see, my hair is going to drive me crazy now because I can see it. 